Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode 11 of Sound Editing for Visual Media. This is the fourth part of my project breakdown. We're going to be mixing the project and preparing it for delivery. In many ways, this mix is unlike some of the projects you are likely to be doing throughout your career. There's no dialogue or music in this project. Whereas most projects you run into probably have one or both of these elements, and a big part of our job is mixing around those elements. That said, an SFX only scene does occur from time to time in any movie. And above and beyond that, when you work on bigger projects as the SFX editor, you are required to do what's called an SFX premix. So there is a lot we can learn from this project and apply to real life projects in our career. I'll show you how to prepare your project for delivery, how to do a basic premix, some really useful custom actions and other things that I use to speed up my workflow, as well as how to properly export the project out of Reaper. So what is a premix? A premix is a mix of a subset of the elements that would end up in a project. So in a big project where there are multiple editors and you are the sound effects editor, you may not have access to the Foley, the finalized score, or the dialogue. But whatever elements you bring to the table, you are expected to do a premix of. This has been done for a long time, since the days where analog gear would put some limitations on the number of tracks we could use. I'll elaborate more on this on the blog, as well as post a few articles by Walter Murch, whose credits include working in the sound department in English Patients, The Godfather 2, Apocalypse Now, and he will tell you more about this. These days, we are no longer limited by track number, but doing a premix still serves a few purposes. First of all, since we layer a lot of sound effects, we want to make sure that the mixer hears these layers the same way we are hearing them and balancing them correctly. Secondly, it saves them time and makes their job easier. If you've already taken a lot of hum and noise out of your sound effects, done a little bit of EQing and compression to make sure everything sits well together, that's all time you're saving the mixer, money you're saving the production company, and you're allowing your mixer to spend less time on menial tasks and more time actually balancing all the elements and dialing in reverbs and things like that. The third reason, and possibly the most important, is that it leaves room for automation. When your mixer loads your edit session into their template, all their failures will be at zero. So something that happens quite often is that they will get elements that are too quiet, but they only have 12 dB to turn it up with automation. Now there are ways around this, but again, this takes time and time is money and sound stages are expensive. Lastly, while your edit session is not intended to sound completely finished and polished off, your edit session should sound good. You should see every session as your calling card. If your mixer or a client opens your project and it's neatly organized and it sounds nice, that will set you apart from other editors who may work less carefully. All right, that's enough yapping, let's get started. To set up our premix session, we want to do a few clerical tasks first. Step one, we need to make sure that our project can be transported. You want to check that all your files are in the same directory so that sending the project folder will send all required files to your mixer. We've already covered how to do this in episode one, so watch that if you haven't. But just in case, let's show you how to double check. This is best done through the project bay. Go to view and choose project bay. The project bay shows you all media files in the project and where they are. Plus there's a lot more you can do to it, but we'll get to that later. Open it, sort by path and go through your items and check. We can see here all my files are in the same directory. But if we scroll down, there's one file outside the path. If you found anything outside, simply right click on it and choose copy file to project directory. Done. If you've set up your project right, you don't have to worry about this step. Now all your files are in the same directory, so there won't be the risk of running into missing files. Since your path is relative, you can also move this project to other drives or other systems and it would still open, no problems. Next, we want to minimize the file size for the project. During the editing process, you may have imported a number of files to your projects or glued new files and so on, all of which are now in your directory. Let's check our directory size real quick. And yeah, we can see that it's three plus gigabytes. We don't want to send a bunch of garbage to our mixer, so let's clear those up. So step two, just in case we want to go back to our edit session with all the garbage intact, let's save a new copy of our file. So I'm gonna go save as, and I'm gonna select these two boxes for creating a new subdirectory as well as copying all the files. So now we're creating another copy of all our session files. Step three, now we're gonna go in and remove every track and media item not in use. So every work track needs to go, every sound design chain, and any other track you put files on, you can remove at this point. Next we go to file and on the bottom we choose clean up project directory. Select one, hit command and A and remove them. Remember you're only deleting copies of these and your originals still in your edit session are preserved. Now if I check I'll see that the project size is much smaller and there's no clutter 
just what's going to be in the project and what needs to be mixed. Our project size has now shrunk considerably, but there's still room for bringing it down. Reaper is non-destructive, meaning anything you do to files once you import them isn't applied to the audio file. So for example, if we have taken a 5 second chunk out of a 5 minute file, that 5 minute file is still in our directory. So my workaround for getting rid of those is to select all files and glue them using the SPK glue tools. This tool allows us to glue multiple files and have more control over how we do it. So we want to preserve the file names, we want to preserve the color, and we want not to include fades because we may still have to tinker with those. So I select all my files, hit it, and it'll take a bit of time and glue all our files. Now if I go back to my project file, you can see that it's smaller yet again. Finally, your mixer also doesn't want the video file, but we'll get rid of that in the end, just so we can reference it during our mixing stage. All right, now we're ready to mix. Once you get used to this workflow, this will not take any time. And if you set up your projects correctly, you can also get rid of the first two steps. I just wanted to show it in case people have been hopping onto these tutorials from halfway through. And also, watch the tutorials. <laughs> So we got our project decluttered and the file size minimized. We're not going to edit anymore or bring anything in. By this point, you should make sure that your files are in sync and we can go ahead and lock some things. I'm going to right click on this lock icon and prevent movement of my items up and down or left and right. You can also see that all my envelope lanes are totally empty. Remember, envelope lanes are for the mixer. The editor works with items. The mixer writes automation. In episode four of this series called Fundamentals of Editing, I mentioned how important it is to consider the ergonomics of your keyboard when setting hotkeys. So all my editing hotkeys are near where my left Left hand rests on the keyboard. Now here I will rest my hand on the other half of the keyboard. And all hotkeys relevant to pre-mixing are accessible here again. So my workflow changes based on where my hand is. In Reaper by default, volume and pan lanes on tracks are toggled by V and P. So for items, I'm setting the same actions to control V and control P. I also have nudge active takes volume plus one and minus one dB to control up and control down. And that's fine for a premix. Remember, we're not doing anything too fine. We're setting overall levels. So a resolution of one dB is more than fine enough here. So my my procedure is I right drag to select items I want to mix, make a time selection by hitting command and L, and if I need to solo them, I will solo the tracks by hitting shift and S. Now S is not on the right side of the keyboard, but I have a gaming mouse and I have shift S also assigned to one of its keys. I highly recommend everyone get a gaming mouse. They are high quality and designed with long usage times in mind. Perfect for us audio editors. Plus all the extra keys can be assigned to hotkeys. I'm going to start the premix with my BGs. Question you may have is, how loud do I need to mix my BGs? And I can't really answer that without knowing the context of your film. Every scene's background is different. An empty room should sound quieter than a busy street, and New York should sound louder than Bruges. It's all relative. As a very general rule of thumb though, and don't at me about this, I like to make sure my BG tracks when mixed hit somewhere around minus 30 to minus 20 dBFS. Again, something to remember is that we want to premix everything louder than what should be final, because there's more room to turn things down than up for a mixer. So I'm going to solo my BG bus and try to mix my BGs at around minus 20.
Now that we have BGs dialed in where we want them, I'm going to premix the SFX. The same procedure applies, select items, make a time selection and loop, play and watch your meters as you nudge the volume up or down. Again, we're shooting for slightly over what should end up in the final mix. With SFX, once again, the levels are relative. Try to consider the point of view a lot. So sounds that are coming from further away should be quieter, sounds that are closer up should be louder, and a door closing should be louder than a footstep. It's all common sense, so don't try to be looking for a one size fits all solution to what level you should set it to because you've heard these sound effects in real life so you should know how loud they sound remember that this bit shouldn't take you too long either as long as you're not clipping and as long as nothing is too quiet and your layers are all audible you're good <laughs> You also notice that I have these items on my timeline which are muted. These items are kind of optional. The mixer will ultimately decide if they want to keep them or not. But they're usually items I don't want to delete and I don't want to present. But I'm trying to provide the mixer with as many options as possible. In this case, for example, there are some extra more close-up sound effects in case the mixer wants to use them after the fade to black. In this project, I was the mixer, so I ultimately decided against it. But it's always important to give your mixer as many options without drowning them in 200 layers. Another thing I live by is the law of two and a half, which is part of the essay I will link in my blog by Walter Murch. The nuances of the rule are best understood by reading the article and listening to the audio examples, but basically, we don't want to clutter up a project with a million sounds, or they will turn into sonic mush. We want to make sure we are bringing attention to the right stuff. So any layering we need to merge into one sound and any element if not important to the narrative needs to go if we already have other elements competing for our attention this is a big oversimplification so just read the damn thing So there you go, that's a premix. Don't forget the old command and S. And now it's ready to be given to my mixer. Just to show you, I'm gonna copy the project from my SSD drive to my desktop and open it from there. And as you can see, the project is intact with everything where it needs to be and all our premix levels saved. And now it's ready to be given to my mixer. From here, I can just close Reaper, zip the project folder and send that off to a mixer. That is if they use Reaper. If they use another DAW, I'm gonna show you a workaround. We can use the consolidate project feature to create what are essentially stems of our files. Each track will be printed as one continuous file. So importing those in another DAW will have all the audio line up perfectly. Let's quickly set this up. I'm gonna put a two pop on my top SFX track and one on my top BG track on exactly two seconds before my video starts. You'll see why we need this in a second. When we consolidate, muted items will not be part of the recorded tracks. So another workaround for that is to create a strip track on the bottom of your project. I'm then gonna use a custom action that selects all muted items, moves them down to strip, and unmutes them. For this, you need to run the Locasana select tracks by name action, use the name strip, 
and export it as a preset. Then make the custom action the same way we made actions in the field recording episode. Select muted items, select strip track, move selected items to select the track, and then unmute. So now I will run the action. Then I will go and look for overlapping items on the strip track. If there are any, I will duplicate the track and drag them down. Now that we've done all this, I'm gonna select all my SFX, BG and strip tracks. Then I go to file, consolidate project, choose entire project and select the tracks. And here we need to also convert all the tracks to the same sample rate. Because Pro Tools, for example, doesn't allow multiple sample rates per project. Save this as a new project in a new directory. Ripple will consolidate and all the files will be in the project folder. Now you can send those to your mixer. I no longer have Pro Tools on my system. So let's just switch to a Pro Tools theme and pretend. Now your mixer will import the audio files and they group them. Then they can tap to the first transient on the SFX tracks, which will take them to the two pop. Then hit A to trim all the audio files to this bit. Now they can move it to two seconds before the start of their video, ungroup all the tracks, and Bob's your uncle. They can additionally use strip silence, which is the same feature as dynamic split in Reaper, to cut out all the silence in between the parts. The strip tracks they can mute and bring anything from them if they need to. Note that this may actually increase our file size, as we are printing all the silence between items as well. So this only works for small projects like this. If you do this for 32 two tracks in a 90 minute feature film, your files are gonna weigh a ton. So if that's what you need, just get AA Translator. We will cover AA Translator in future videos. Now AA Translator is not free, but if you're making feature film money doing audio work, you can probably afford AA Translator. So just get it and eliminate this entire workaround. So that's it for today. Woo, that was a lot of information. But I hope that you have seen that when it comes to mixing SFX, there are no big secrets or hard and fast rules. You just gotta use common sense and mix things the way that you know they sound. You know what things sound like from having lived a life. So just apply that to the film. Now we can break the rules when needed. If the subject of a shot is far away, but they're the focal point of the audience, then obviously we can mix them louder than would be natural. And while in real life, if a gun goes off in a small room, it'll probably deafen you. We don't want to do that to our audience. As always, check out the blog post for more info. There's a lot of stuff we glossed over and that's because we covered most of them in previous videos. So I hope that you've been watching those and if not, please go and watch them. The blog post for this episode will be short. Mostly, I just want to urge you to read the article Dense Clarity, Clear Density by Walter Murch. Reading it was truly life-changing for me and really it's mandatory reading for any audio professional in film, television, animation, and even video games. Let me know if you have any other questions and let me know what projects you're working on because if I know what my audience is up to, I can possibly do some tutorials more tailored to your needs. So if you're doing a sound design competition or if you're working for radio or ads or whatever it is, just let me know in the comments. Through breaking down this small project, we kind of skipped ahead a little bit to mixing, but there's still a lot I want to show you about sound design and sound editing. So from the next episode, we're going to get back into doing that. If you like these tutorials, tutorials and the work I do, you can go through the link above, which will also be in the description and donate to me. Just buy me a coffee, essentially any amount helps. Do all the things that YouTube wants you to do, like like in the comment. And I would also really appreciate it if you can share this video with your colleagues and your friends and on different Facebook groups and subreddits that you may be a part of. Because there's only so many times I can post my content on the Reaper subreddit before everybody hates me. And that may have already happened. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.